Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hi, hello. It is Josh Bow, one of the many editors over at MavsMoneyBall.com, coming to you with another edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark, coming to you with a Mavericks win this time, a home win, a home win by 23 points. Mavericks beat the Atlanta Hawks 123-100. Normally, you would say this is nothing to write home about because the Atlanta Hawks are not very good. They are now 13-37. and 37. But the Mavs had no Luka, and they had no Kristaps Porzingis sitting out the second night of a back-to-back after playing about 36 minutes last night in Houston. So really, you know, I'm here with – this is Josh Bo. I'm here with Kirk Henderson, and we just said it right before I hit record that there was almost nothing bad to say about this game. No, I, I had a really good time watching this one. Um, I, I really – I did some laundry during this game, <laughs> uh, did some errands around the house, but I kept an eye on the whole thing. You know, it started off a little sluggish, and then the Mavs just poured it on. Uh, you know, it's going to kind of be a weird stretch from now until our All-Star break because, uh, you know, Luca's going to basically miss everything uh, as far as, as I understand it. Porzingis will probably be hit or miss. I, I, I don't think there are any back-to-backs coming up. Uh, before the All Star, I oh, know there is. There's a Washington There's one and Charlotte road back to back. Um, you know, I expect him to play the next four, five, six games. But to see the Mavericks come out and really handle a team is just nice. Now the Hawks are a borderline. You know, they're not even a college team. They're like a G League team to a certain respect. <laughs> they only dressed nine guys tonight, and then they lost two more during the course of the game as um, Cam Reddish, uh, former Maverick great, as as <laughs> I consider him, uh, left the game. And then former Maverick great Trey Young also left the game late in the third quarter. Not sure what the deal was there. Reddish kind of took a scary elbow to the mouth. Like, it didn't look bad. But it was one of those where he just got caught in the right place in his face and he kind of stumbled off the floor. I felt really bad because I was making fun of him on Twitter because I just I don't think he's a good basketball player because he's not a good basketball player. And he, you know, he's not so I I felt pretty bad about that one. But, you know, the Hawks are still kind of a fun offensive team. They have interesting players. John Collins is basically what we want Dwight Powell to be. Um and watching you know him and Max, he was a lot of fun battling. But just seeing them, you know, absolutely pants a team like this was really I just had a great time. I had a great time watching it. Yeah, twenty of thirty nine from three. Um, I didn't get to watch as much as you. I heard more on the radio actually, uh, since I was a little bit out and about this evening, but they really poured it on that third quarter, shooting the ball wise. I mean, they I think they made like six, seven or eight threes in the third, like Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's pretty wild to look at the box score and they won by 23 with no Luca, no Chris stops. And then Tim Hardaway jr. Didn't really do much. Um, it seems like you would think if you, just, you said that before the game, you know, how do you think the game would go? And you'd probably be like, Oh yeah, it's pretty, that might be pretty dicey, but it feels like outside of TH, THJ, literally every other Mav had a imprint on the game uh, mm-hmm. from what I could tell. Yeah. Um, I, I would call it, it was a really good reminder for for 
for casuals of how important both Maxi Kleba and Dorian Finney-Smith are to how the Mavericks go. You know, Kleba finished a plus 24 in 30 minutes. He had four blocks and four three-pointers. And I wrote about this in my recap, but to have this guy as your backup five is just theft in the modern NBA. He is arguably one of the most important contracts in the entire league. And then we have Dorian Finney-Smith, who, you know, Finney-Smith did not have a good January. He is not the best on-ball defender. He gets cooked a lot. And I mean, but that's that's largely the nature of how the league is now. Uh, you know, you can't really guard guys anymore. You can't put hands on him. He's got a lot of foul calls. So he had kind of a rough month where he's guarding great player after great player. And so he came out against the Hawks and played a little angry. Frankly, he was taking the ball at the rim. He got, uh, he's only, he's, he's credited with two steals, but he was kind of all around the ball. Uh, it was a really great box score game, 22 points, seven rebounds, four assists, two steals, one block. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun to really see him is a guy who, you know, you and I in particular went from, I would just say we didn't have a lot of faith in him, to, <laughs> you know, pulling a, pulling a complete 180 and then seeing him settle down a bit in, in January. It was just nice to see him bounce back like that because sometimes the role players, you know, they play well for 20, 25, 30 games, and then they just fall back to, to earth. And at this point, I think we have to, we, we may have to, you know, just admit this, this Dorian Finney Smith thing is real. He's 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 and it was just it was fun to watch. Great. I'm I'm really glad for him. Yeah. And the other one that jumps out at me is Jalen Brunson, you know, probably his best. I think it's a career high 27. So best scoring game of his career. Mm. Uh put 34. up 20. 34 is the best scoring game of his career. I looked it up oh, last year. Darn. Well, probably yeah. best of this season, right? Yeah, but easily best of this season. Yeah. Uh eight assists, only one turnover. Uh Took 22 shots, uh, which, hey, without Luke and KP. You, Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that was nice. And it's, you know, it just it, it's just a good reminder of, like you said, that these guys can play and that it's another reminder that these guys are get like, you know, Brunson is in his second year and Kleba is, you know, I think he's like 27, but NBA experience wise, he's still young. So like these guys are just going to, it's, I think you've been talking about this, about maybe wanting to write this just about how it's just the progression is not always the linear path that we want to see the team take. They're going to, they're going to slump and they're going to rise and they're going to fall back down to earth and then come back again. And and it was just, yeah, it was just nice to see them win. And then at home, like, like on a Saturday night, you know, just make the fans happy. Like it just, it just feel good win, like all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I do um, want to discuss one quick thing that, you know, the box score impact of Willie Collie Stein, you know, he got his first start or maybe it was his second start. Yeah. He played last night. What's wrong with me? Seven. He seven didn't points. start last night though. So he first didn't start last. Okay. So seven points and 10 boards. Uh, he was only three, eight from the floor. He had what I kind of would refer to as a, a light version of a good Deandre Jordan game. Uh, <laughs> In that he's he's a, he's a big guy. Uh, he he's a full seven foot. He's got broad shoulders. He's a little lean, but his he rolled to the basket well. Um, he played really good defense. He had probably the rudest Mavericks block I've seen in a long time. I don't know what uh, it, it's a, it's on the Mavs Twitter feed, Josh. If you haven't gone seen it, it's in the first yeah. quarter. He he just like obliterates a guy along with uh, Dorian Finney Smith right there. And, you know, his timing's a little off. He's going to have to figure out who he's playing with. And, and, you know, that's sort of a connection thing. I'm not sure he's going to be really the lob threat that a lot of people have that high hope for. Uh, but he's he's he played with pretty good energy tonight, which has been your and I's big question as, as we've been thinking about this trade. And, you know, that was just it was, it was nice to see because there are plenty of opportunities in this game where he could have taken some time and, and you know, he just, just had a good game. That's good. Uh, and, you know, you just can't really ask. I think the lob threat thing is, is a good thing to point out. Like it just I think the fans see what he looks like and you just assume, oh, well, he could he could do what Dwight Powell can do. And you, you don't realize like it's a skill. It's not just something you can flip a switch and it'll be something he needs to work himself into a little bit more since he wasn't always consistent there in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. So that, that'll be a process. Another thing I'm just noticing, cause like I said, you know, I listened to most of the game on the radio, but uh, Seth Curry hitting five threes. 
just looking it up while you're talking, he was at 43% in January from three. So I think we're finally starting to see the Seth that I think we thought we were going to get before the season. I know it's, he still kind of has his Jekyll and Hyde games sprinkled in here and there, but for the most part, I mean, it was pretty good January and starting off February with 15 points and five threes, you know, maybe he's going to turn a corner a little bit. And if they can get him playing like this with Luca and KP healthy at the same time, maybe that's another little step the, the team can take. But that was just another little thing I noticed. Otherwise, I don't even know what else to say. Just a solid thrashing of a bad team, which really needed to happen. The only other thing I want to note is I think these next several games before All Star break do have potential for some for some extreme frustration. Um, as much as Brunson and uh, Wright are capable of passing the ball, there's not really a play, and there's not really a, a player that the Mavericks have right now because Luca's out, whose inclination is to pass the ball. I don't mean that as a criticism because a lot of these guys are very very good at scoring the ball. But, you know, like you said, Brunson had 22 shot attempts. Not a knock. I swear that's not a knock. Anybody that, that's a big Brunson head out there. But, you know, there have been plenty of moments this, this season where we've seen these guys, all of them, kind of just force shots where they don't need to. Um, and and I could kind of see that a little bit with Collie Stein, who would roll and not get looks. Um it's just something to keep an eye on, I think, as as they they try to gut this out. Like, I'm still of the opinion that Luka Doncic is essentially wants to be a pass first guy. I think he scores out of necessity and because he's good at it. But I think his inclination is to move the ball, and I don't think that's the case with anybody else on the Mavericks roster. Maybe Seth Curry, who loves to get a little fancy with the ball, but you know he's his, he's obviously a great shooter. Is that? off base or you know what no, do you think no i think you i think you're right i mean a lot of these guys they assembled a team they they kind of assembled a luca team that is all these guys their number one op- job is to luca is going to create space you need to do something with that space whether it's spotting up or driving hard and scoring at the rim like it, it's a lot of a lot of low usage low usage spot up guys when you think like maxi finney smith seth justin jackson tim hardaway jr like you ideally when the mavs are click you know you don't want those guys to be handling in the pick and roll or or you know trying to make a play or create and so yeah i agree with you it's really just you know it's delon and then brunson on a you know hey eight assists and one turnover is not bad so I think Brunson has the capability. He's just a little inconsistent because he's in his second year. But but yeah, I see what you mean. It, it could get a little log jammed in, in these next couple of games against better teams for sure. Yep. That's um, about all I got. Yeah, well, that's all I got. So let's just get out of here and enjoy the remainder of our Saturday nights. Uh, Kirk, thanks for hopping on and thanks for doing double duty, doing the recap as well. That's up on the site if you want to check that out. Uh, we will have plenty of new content next week as we try to navigate these luca waters and, and we'll see what the Mavs can do. Otherwise, it's going to be it for Josh Bow and Kirk Henderson. Again, Mavs win 123-100 over the Atlanta Hawks. This is Mavs Moneyball After Dark, and we'll talk to you next time.